Our first guest is a long time, very committed. We talk about people who are so committed to our community, uh, Dr. Robert Hartzell. Um, Dr. Hartzell, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfect. Uh, JR, you Great. just jumped. Oh, yeah. I, did. <laughs> I heard the speaker go off. It's so that. funny when you're doing um, t- <clears throat> call ins, how that's all going to work out. So sometimes, you know, the stars are in a line and we actually have somebody come across on the telephone. So welcome, Happy. Dr. Hartzell. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, I guess we were just talking about people who are committed to our community and, you know, to introduce you, I know you're a long, you're actually a native Floridian, you're not even a long resident, you're a native, and you've been in Hernando County for many, many years, so um, how many many's? Uh, since 1988. 1988. So, um, and and thank you very much because I know that you and your family are here, and you do have a major, a, a big commitment to Florida, and of course to Hernando County, and you are board certified in urgent care, correct? Yes, ma'am. So, what else, what else would you like to share with our listeners that um, about yourself and as far as your passion for our community, and of course for health care? Oh, let's see. I'm originally from Newport Ritchie, and I moved up. To Hernando County after I finished my training there was a good opportunity um, I can remember you know in my younger days playing sports coming up here and playing basketball and different things and uh, I always thought it was kind of a neat place uh, my hobbies are I like to fish and hunt and hike and that gives us plenty of opportunities to do that you are in the right and, state <laughs> yes absolutely and um, as far as medical When I first came to town, there was myself, another family practice doctor, and one pediatrician. And uh, I started out, I did newborn nursery, you know, did all ages. And just to see the transformation over the last 30 years is just uh, incredible. Now we have big major teaching hospitals in the area and residency programs and all kinds of medical students. And I think uh, medicine has come just a tremendous uh, a long way since uh, I started in 1988, and I can't wait to see what it's going to do in the future. That's very exciting to have been here for that long to experience the growth in Hernando County, um, not only as far as in residential and, of course, in business, but, of course, in health care, and to think that you have been involved in every step of the way. So congratulations, and again, I can't thank you enough for that commitment to our community. So Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and it's really funny, as long as I've been with the Chamber, I don't think our paths have ever crossed, so we'll have to make sure that happens at some point in time. So you've been with okay. Access since when? Uh, 2008. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful group of doctors and, and spearheaded by, um, obviously, Dr. Singh. And, uh, yes. y- you know, if you go on the website, which is, um, I don't have it on the top of my head, but I just Googled Access Healthcare Hernando County. I'm, I was impressed by how many physicians and people like yourself who've been in the community for quite some time who have now who are now working under the Access Health umbrella, which um, which is wonderful because what happens, I know you do a, um, you work in tandem with each other and refer um, each other. So to have that area of um, specialists uh, who you can work with that you've worked with for many, many years to be able to refer your patient to is, is probably a very, very wonderful thing for you to know that you're referring to a, um, you know, somebody that you've known for a long time. Right. I think it's good for the uh, patient as well as the doctors. Yes. And I've had the opportunity to meet some um, young doctors who are coming into your um, into that practice, which is really nice. And I'm sure you've had that opportunity to spend some time with them <clears throat> to be able to see the, you know, the, the future of healthcare working with these young people. I think that's very exciting. Oh, yeah. I think the future of healthcare in Hernando County is just unlimited. You know, it's like I had mentioned with the residency programs and all the medical students coming here, uh, you know, a certain percentage of them will stay. And, and I think the people of Hernando County will be taken care of very well medically from here on out. Very, very much so. So, um, doctor, are you still located on 11479 Cortez Boulevard? Is that where yes, you're Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, um, and I wanted to share this with everyone. And the phone number there is 352-597-3511. Yes. So your primary, um, I would say, because you're a family medicine, um, would be, is it uh, Medicare? Is it people who are over the age of? Yes. Okay. Our practice consists uh, really 100% Medicare and um, 
Medicare products, you know, like the Medicare HMOs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's what we do. And, and I think you do it well. I think that, as I said, Access has that umbrella of all of the primaries and, of course, the specialists to be able for a person who is um, on Medicare to be able to, to go into their retirement lives um, with, you know, with, with excellent health care. And I, and I really um, thank you so much for being part of that team. Let's talk about um, how COVID, and I know this is kind of an overly discussed topic, but I don't think it could be um, discussed enough or brought to a presence of mind of how it's impacted your practice? Well, <clears throat> it's impacted it tremendously. Um, as we speak right now, we're just doing telemedicine. Uh, we're not seeing any live patients face to face. And um, I miss that and the patients have expressed that they miss that. And um, it kind of limits you on what you can do as you can imagine, over the phone. Mm -hmm. But um, it seems to be we're making the best out of a bad situation, I guess you could sort of say. Well, again, it's wonderful to be um, working in tandem with so many physicians and, of course, your administration and your uh, your PAs as far as a team to be able to, you know, um, be there for your patients and to help them through this very, very challenging time. And so I think that having so many people within the facility, um, you know, there's an opportunity to, for everyone to work together to make sure the patients are taken care of. Yes. So one of the things I think it was mentioned to me um, was um, your interest or your knowledge as far as liver enzymes. Did you want to touch upon that before we wrap this program up? Yeah. Um, so many people come in to go over their blood work or we go over, over the phone with them. And, and um, you know, most people don't know exactly what the liver en enzymes are. And if you look on your lab report, there's that one section kind of down below at the bottom of the complete metabolic profile that'll say alkaline phosphatase, bilirubin, AST, ALT. And that's, that's your, your liver function. And um, so many things can affect the liver. Um, really what I'd like to just touch on first, we're talking about liver functions, but kind of just mentioned, you know, what the liver is and where it is and, and what it does. Um, you know, the liver happens to be the largest solid organ in your body. Uh, it's roughly about three pounds, about the size of a football. There's two lobes to the liver. The right's uh, bigger than the left lobe and it's um, separated by a ligament called a falciform ligament. And the individual cells, working healthy cells of the liver are called uh, hepatocytes. But uh, the liver, works to uh, help detoxify and purify the blood. Uh, it helps remove, you know, toxins that we may take in um, from the bloodstream. It helps store vitamins and minerals such as iron and copper and release it and is able to release them as we need them. Uh, it helps break down fats, helps with digestion, digestion in our diet. It can also, you know, it either stores the fats or releases them as energy. And also it manufactures bile that the small intestines use to help uh, digest fats uh, even further. Um, it helps break down different proteins. It also helps break down alcohol and medications. It also helps uh, create proteins that are responsible for clotting. So when you cut yourself, you don't bleed to death. It also helps our immune system. Uh, it stores excess of blood, blood sugar and it can even break down old and damaged red blood cells. But to me, the one thing that is uh, amazing about the liver, you can, uh, a week after surgery, say if somebody had two thirds of their liver removed, it's roughly the same size a week later after surgery. It, it can regenerate itself. Um, not to say if you keep injuring your liver in different ways, Eventually, that can lead to liver failure and death, but uh, for a while, it can just continue to regenerate itself. So let me ask this one question. Um, mm -hmm. As far as what can one do, whether it be as far as a supplement and or eating mm -hmm. correctly, to because mm -hmm. obviously the liver is one of the organs that purifies, um, to right. help that liver stay healthy. 
Well, you can avoid alcohol. Um, you can lose weight, decrease your calories. Uh, you can reduce the amount of cholesterol you eat. Stay away from the saturated fats, the trans fats. Um, you can avoid smoking. Exercise regularly. You know, increase your folic acid. Eat more veggies, fiber. Eat more asparagus, avocados, spinach, lettuce, things like that. Greens. Mm -hmm. Greens, Ex yes. Supplements? Uh, uh, supplements. Some people, well, we actually, one is garlic's good for your liver. Turmeric's good for your liver. Um, milk thistle helps uh, detoxify your liver. Green tea is good for your liver. And even um, the one I like is coffee. Drinking two to three cups of coffee a day is actually good for your liver. And they're not, they're not real sure if that's the caffeine or the antioxidants in the coffee. But uh, you know, you want to uh, make sure you get plenty of potassium, B6, folic acid. You kind of just, uh, it sounds like common sense, but you know, it's just healthy eating, I guess. Stay, I you know, say try, yeah. if, you can, if you can afford it, eat more organic foods. You know, supposedly there's less toxins in organic foods. Um, and just, yeah, a well-balanced, healthy diet, just like you should for a lot of things. Is, is the best for your liver. Well, doctor, again, um, I'm sure anybody who would like additional information on, you know, as far as to how to have a healthy liver and maintain a healthy liver, and of course, to speak with you and do a consult with you, it, they can contact you at the 597-3511 phone number, correct? Yes, ma'am, that'd be great. Thank you very much, doctor. We appreciate you joining us today and of course your commitment to our community and thank you again. Thank you, I'd like to thank Chamber of Commerce Access Healthcare and WWJB. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye Have bye. a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.